Okay, so, so that's great. We, we just extended the vector line class to have something really useful. There's a, there was one other thing I mentioned that I wanted to be able to do with this as well, and that is animate color to. So this is gonna, the, the Vectrosity library allows you to set a color for each line segment. So in, in this case here, with our, our basic graph here, everything is green, every line segment. So what I wanna be able to do is I wanna animate, I wanna be able to animate each of these line segments just passing in an array of colors. So we're gonna do something real similar to what we just made, and we're gonna build a, a color animation system here. So let's get rid of that, we're not gonna need that there. And I'm just gonna paste in some code to speed things up here. So we're gonna do the, the same basic thing we did in the previous one. But we're gonna do a little sanity check. Okay, so just going through this, we um, so one thing about Vectrosity is you're going to end up with, when you uh, when you actually apply colors, you end up with four times more colors than you passed in. That's just an implementation detail, and it actually uh, makes for uh, for a fun little link statement that we're going to see in a minute. So our total length is actually going to be the line colors, and the line colors length divided by four. So we want to make sure this is just a quick sanity check. We want to make sure that we have the proper number of color points so we're just going to check and we're going to do a debug log error and we'll probably end up uh, throwing an exception at that point if, uh, if that happens so you, you can guard against that in different ways uh, I prefer not to use exceptions because I end up compiling them out in the end anyway so let's go ahead and see what we got here so now we, we're going to grab some new colors here and you can see we have new color points and it's just going to be an empty array of color points now what we need to do is if you remember, we always need to know when animating the start value and the end value. So we need to be able to copy the original array of colors for reference so that we can animate. But if you remember, we only want every fourth element because uh, there's four times more than we actually need. So we're going to make a, a real quick link statement here that's uh, actually going to grab every fourth element for us. So we're going to do uh, now the colors are in, you can see this is a, an array of colors. It's in the vectorline.line colors. So we want to grab every fourth one. So we'll use, um, we'll use this uh, the method version of, of link rather than writing it out longhand. And we're going to use a where. So what we want is uh, we're going to pass in two things. We want x and i. So x is going to be the color and i is going to be the current index. So again, this is an anonymous function. It takes in two parameters, and now this is going to be the function body. So we just want every fourth one, so we want where i mod 4 equals 0. Okay, so one last thing we want to do is this is going to give us an i enumerable in its current state. And we don't want an I enumerable. We actually, if you remember, we want an actual array. So by uh, there's actually a method available in Link where we can call to array. What this is going to do is it's going to execute the link statement instantly and return an array for us. And it's exactly the, what we want there. We want, this is going to end up being an array of every fourth value, which is perfect. That's it, the exact colors we passed in. So we're going to do the same basic thing over here where we, we need a couple setup variables for our animation. We need the start time, we need to calculate the end time, and we'll save something out for the ease position. This is all going to look real similar. And we're going to of course want to do a yield return null because we're in an I enumerable. We're going to loop through while start time is less than end time. and. Again, this is going to look real similar as well. We need to calculate the ease position. So we grab the ease position uh, based on the duration and the time. And now we need to do our loop. So we're going to loop through each of the colors here. So remember, we have our total length saved. We always save this so that we don't have to keep recalculating it. Saved up here. And we want to change the color now in the new color points array. Okay, so what we can use is uh, real simple. There's a lerp method on the color class. And we wanna 
always do our animations using the start position, the end position, and the ease position. So let's go ahead and grab our start color point and our end color point, which is passed in the function up here. And again, this is all going to look similar. Ease position. Okay, so once we get through this loop, we are going to have a new array of colors that are in the process of being animated from start color point to color point, which is what we passed in. That's our, our end goal. So there's only one little thing left to do here, and that's again a vectorosity function here. There's a function set colors, and it lets you set an array of colors on the vector line. So we're just going to set new color points. All right. So now we just need to give ourselves a little tester again. So we'll uh, we'll make another little GUI button up in here. And again, we're going to want to stop all coroutines just in case there's one going. Okay, so we need to calculate uh, a random assortment of colors. And it just so happens, along with this generate graph data method, there's a generate random colors method. And all this does is takes in a length, and it'll just uh, create a whole bunch of uh, random colors of joy, apparently. So let's grab some colors. Now, you'll see in here that it's total points minus one, and that, that's a vectorosity thing right there. There's, uh, because um, you know, basically the way the line segment is created, there's always going to be one less line segment than line points. So now that we have the colors, we're free and clear to start the coroutine. And let's actually call that on uh, graph lines. So remember, graph line is our vector line. And since we made an extension, we have a new method on graph line, animate color to. And it's going to take in our colors and a duration. So let's use two. Okay, so when we click this button, what should happen, we should generate some colors here, and it should animate over two seconds to the new colors. So hopefully we have no compiler errors. Okay, no compiler errors. And we have our animate points method and our animate colors method. So let's see how this works. So we can see that it's animating the colors just like we wanted. Each segment is getting its own color, and it's smoothly animating from the old color to the new color. All right, so that's all good and well. Let's just uh, throw one more thing in here. I'm just going to copy paste this in. So what we're going to do is make an animate bolts method. And it's going to do the same thing, stop all coroutines. This time we're going to generate some graph data. We're going to generate some new colors. And then we're going to call both of these into coroutine. So we're going to do animate2 and animate color2 in one shot. This is basically just to show it's possible. So see how it works. And there we go. All right, so just like that, we have a vectorosity library. Maybe it was, uh, we grabbed it, had a couple methods uh, missing that we maybe wanted to see in the library. So what this allowed us to do is, without actually diving into the source code of vectorosity and having to modify it, we are able to add these methods that are really handy for uh, for a game here, and, uh, and we'll be able to still stay on the upgrade path. So when when Eric releases the next uh, update to Vectrosity, we can just drop it in and everything will work just as it used to. All right, thanks for watching.